Welcome back everyone. So now we're in part two of substitution methods and the second part deals with a special equation called the Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation looks a lot like first order linear except that we have a term y to the n on the right hand side attached to our g of t forcing function. And so our Bernoulli's equation is written as follows. So same thing except now we have y to the n where n is any real number. And I want to quickly point out that if n is equal to 0, then this is exactly our first order linear ODE. So we could easily just do first order integrating factor. If n equals 1, then this turns into a separable linear and homogeneous ODE. So we know how to do those. So how do we deal when n doesn't equal 0 and 1? Well, this is what we do. This is, so let me point this out real quick. The only thing that I would really want you to remember is this substitution right here, because everything else you can derive, or you can at least mess around with the equation enough that you could get the right answer. But just in case, so once you make the substitution, u is equal to y to the 1 minus n, where that n was that special um, power of the nonlinear y term. And then from there, if you want to calculate du dt, that's the same as du dy times dy dt, right? So du dy is the derivative of your function u with respect to y. So derivative of y to the 1 minus n would be, simple power rule, 1 minus n times y to the negative n. And then derivative of y with respect to t is nothing other than dy dt. And then if you want to rearrange this a little bit uh, by dividing by 1 minus n, you'll get y to the negative n dy dt is equal to 1 over 1 minus n du dt. Good. So after you make this transformation, you want your ODE to be strictly in U and T. So there should no longer be any Ys. And then, ta-da, you should be able to get a first order linear. And we know what to do from there. Then you just pick your integrating factor. And then at the very end, you back substitute and simplify if possible and plug in your initial condition if you're given one. So to see how this works, let's do an example. So this is a Bernoulli's equation. It's written in dy dt plus p of t y is equal to g of t times y to the n. And here you see that y or our n is 2, right? Because here, this term right here makes it Bernoulli's. So our substitution is u is equal to y 1 minus 2. So that's 1 over y. Then our du dt will be minus 1 over y squared, right? So just the derivative of this times dy dt. Now, these are your two keys, right? You need to find a way to fit this into this equation, substitute it in a way so that you can get a much simpler equation. So you'll notice if I divide this whole equation by y squared, what do I get? So hopefully you wrote it down, the top equation divided by y squared will be 1 over y squared dy dt plus 3 of t. Over here we had a y, so y divided by y squared will be 1 over y. And then over here we'll just have t squared, right? Because over here was our y squared. Then, if you'll notice up here, right, our du dt is negative 1 over y squared times dy dt. That is almost what we have right here, right? All that's missing is a minus sign. So let's deviate a little from a standard form and put a minus sign, multiply everything by a negative. So minus 1 over y squared dy dt minus 3 over t 1 over y is equal to minus t. Good. Minus t squared. Sorry. Good. So now this thing is exactly du dt. And then this is exactly u, right? So now let's make our substitutions. We'll get that du dt minus 3 over t times u is equal to t squared. And look at that. That is a first order linear equation. And we know how to do this. Hopefully by now you've done enough that you know that we need to first find e to the integral of minus 3 over t dt. And this is just e to the minus 3 ln t. 
and this is e to the ln of t to the minus 3, which is nothing more than t to the minus 3. Good. That is our integrating factor. Moving down, we multiply everything through by that. And then, so it's t to the minus 3 times y, derivative of this, will equal to t squared times t to the minus 3, which is minus 1 over t, so minus t squared, sorry, over uh, t to the minus 3. And then from here, if we integrate, right, with respect to dt, we'll get t to the minus 3 y is equal to the minus ln of t plus c. Good. And then last thing is to divide by t minus 3, so that is just a function of y. Ooh, wait, sorry, no, not y, it's u. u is our variable. I'm still hung up on a what we did last unit, so this is a u, and this is a u. Okay, good, quick fix. Then, multiplying, or getting rid of this t to minus 3, we'll get u is equal to minus t cubed ln of t plus c t cubed, right? No, you're not done, you gotta back substitute, which is why I caught my mistake. So u was written as y to the 1 minus 2, which is 1 over y. Therefore, this equation really is 1 over y is equal to minus t cubed ln of t plus c t cubed. And right here you could be done, but keep in mind that this is pretty easy to write in explicit form, so we will. This is nothing more than y is equal to 1 over c t cubed minus t cubed ln of natural, or absolute value of t. And there you go. That should be the final answer, and it's as simple as that. You're basically transforming Bernoulli's into a first order linear, and as long as your first order linear chops are up there, you should be able to get to the final answer. And with that, we conclude unit one, which was first order linear, or sorry, just first order equations. Next unit, um, not exactly sure where I'm going to take it. More than likely, I'll go into second order equations and then from there step into systems of ODEs, just because that's, I think, how I uh, was taught differential equations and I thought that made the most sense. So keep, keep on the lookout for that and uh, I'll see you in the next unit.